So um, all of these electron shuttles that have been produced, what they will do is carry their electrons to this last stage of cellular respiration. This is called the electron transport chain. And what happens in electron transport is kind of like the name implies. Um, so the electrons from the shuttle molecules are going to get transported down a chain of proteins. Uh, so in purple, these are proteins that are embedded inside of the mitochondria. Let's just jump over here to a, the schematic real quick. So here's a schematic of a mitochondria. Remember mitochondria have all of these folds inside and those folds, the inner membranes, have proteins embedded in them. So we're just looking at a close-up of one of those inner mitochondrial membranes. All right, so we've got a set of proteins embedded in the membrane, and the shuttle molecules, NADH and FADH2, what they do is they bring their electrons over and they hand them off to the first protein that they can. So first one in the chain that's willing to accept the electrons. Uh, by the way, these electrons are real high in energy. It's kind of like holding on to a hot potato. Nobody wants to keep holding on to it, so they just keep trying to pass it off. And so um, once this first purple protein takes the electron, it's not gonna hold on to it very long. It's gonna pass it on to the next protein in the chain and that one's gonna hand it off to the next one in the chain. Each time the electron gets handed off, it loses just a little bit of energy. So that's why, I think that's why they made the line kind of drop down. The electron is losing energy. Um, okay, some important things here. As the proteins hand off the electron, the energy of the electron is being used to power something. Each of these proteins is acting as a pump. What are, what are they pumping? What is it that these proteins pump? If you look at the picture, it'll show you. So we've got some protons, some hydrogen ions, and each of these um, protein pumps is taking those hydrogen ions and moving them across to the other side of the membrane. See in gray, this is the membrane that's being represented. Okay, so all three of these pumps are taking hydrogen ions and moving them to the other side of the membrane. A great analogy for this is uh, thinking of water that's stored behind a dam. So as more hydrogen ions get moved to this side of the membrane, essentially we've got a lot of potential energy stored up over here. There's a lot of potential. These hydrogen ions, if they had a, uh, if there was like a little hole in the membrane, they would flood back through, just like water through a hole in a dam. Uh, so what is that potential energy useful for? Why is this an important thing? Well, notice there's one other protein in the membrane here, this guy. This is called ATP synthase, and this is a very special protein. It's actually an enzyme, and what this enzyme does is it synthesizes ATP molecules. All right, so it needs a power source in order to do that. Turns out the power source is all of these hydrogen ions. Okay, so these hydrogen ions are able to move through ATP synthase. There's a little opening that they can slide on through. As they do that, it causes um, part of this protein to spin, kind of like a turbine in water. And that spinning is what makes this reaction take place. So um, the ATP synthase is able to take a phosphate group and attach it to ADP, thereby generating a molecule of ATP. Really amazing how this whole thing works. All right, so um, one other thing you might be wondering about here, why is there a skull and crossbones in the picture? This is just kind of a, a note that some poisons actually work by messing up this electron transport chain. Some poisons like rat poison, for example, a lot of times the way that they work is by interrupting this chain. They make it so that this protein can't function um, can no longer like hand hand down accept and hand down the electron so it blocks the function of that protein and because of that um, there's no way for for electrons to keep flowing and so there's no way to get this buildup of hydrogen ions and therefore there's no way for the cell to make energy ATP so literally um, a cell would would die because it would run out of energy in that case one other thing to notice here is just where does the electron finally end up at in the end? So we said that the electron gets handed off down these proteins. In the end, the last protein in the chain uh, passes the electron to 
molecule of oxygen. And this is why oxygen is one of the inputs for cellular respiration. This is where it's needed. It has to, uh, it's what we call the final electron acceptor. It's the thing that finally is able to handle that electron and not let go of it. Um, so once the oxygen takes the electron up, then it will combine with a couple of the protons, a couple of hydrogen ions, and end up forming water. So there's our other uh, quote unquote waste product from cellular respiration is just is water. Okay, so it's amazing that cells can do this. Again, the inputs were oxygen and glucose and the outputs were carbon dioxide. We saw that earlier on. It was a waste product that was produced. Water, here it is right here, another waste product that's produced and a lot of ATP. So again, for every glucose molecule that goes through cellular respiration, gets broken down by this pathway, um, there are about 32 ATP molecules that get produced in the end. That's a lot of energy. And then cells can use that energy to do all sorts of things throughout the cell.